Hi guys, this is Donnie with your Smart Licensing Short. In this demo, we're going to be showing how to deploy the Cisco Smart Software Manager on-prem license server. As a quick checklist that you'll need for your deployment, we need the software, which comes in the form of an ISO that can be downloaded from Cisco, the installation guide, which you can download when you get the software. You'll need to understand what your profile is going to be, and this is generally based around your InfoSec policy. We'll talk about that more in a minute. You'll need an IP address for your server. You'll need an appropriate subnet or mask to go along with your IP address your default gateway address, your DNS server address, and you'll need to choose a password. The password uh, in its minimums is minimum of 15 characters, at least one special number, upper and lowercase character. So now that we have our checklist covered, let's head on into the installation of the software. For this installation, I'm going to be using something called VirtualBox to allow me to deploy virtual machines onto my computer. To begin this, I'm going to click New. Now, here I need to give it a name, so I'm just going to use um, just on-prem. Uh, you, you can pick a name that is more appropriate for you. For the type, you're going to choose Linux. The on-prem license server is based off of CentOS 7. If your orchestration tool does not provide a setting for CentOS 7, just head on over and choose Red Hat 64-bit. We're going to need to give it some memory. We're going to choose the default of 8 gig. Um, we're going to need to create a hard drive, so I'm just going to let uh, VirtualBox choose its defaults. And then we need to provide the amount of memory that we're going to use. So in this particular case, I'm going to use the default of 200 gig and create a hard drive. Now at this stage, my virtual machine has been created, but I need to change a few more settings. So let's go to settings and take a look at the couple of extra things that I need to do. First thing, let's go to the system. Memory is still fine, but we don't need this floppy drive, so let's just go ahead and get it out of the way. For processors, depending on what your ultimate number of devices that you're going to uh, register to your on-prem server, you'll need to set the CPUs. Minimum is two. I'm going with the recommendation of four. The other thing that we need to look at is our network. The, um, the on-prem server will support up to two interfaces. I'm just going to do one for this demo. I'm going to make it bridged so I can share my network. Uh, for the type Intel Pro, which is the default, works just fine. The other thing that I will want to do is choose the software. So let's do that real quick. So let's go into storage here under the CD controller. For this demo, I've picked the SSM on-prem version 8, and I'm picking up the bill 2020-06 ISO. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and then let's go ahead and start the machine up. So the machine is now booting, and it's going to boot from that CD drive that we had in, uh, picked earlier. So there are two options, test and install or install. If you freshly downloaded the ISO, it doesn't hurt to test it. It takes a little more time. I've installed this before, so I'm just going to go with the install option. What's happening now is, is that the VM is booting the CD and getting ready to copy the contents of the CD onto the virtual machine that we've created. That profile that we talked about earlier will be set in the next screen we see, which is the Kickstart screen. The two profiles available to you are standard profile and disastig profile. The key differences between these, the standard profile allows you to log in and access the bash shell and run sudo or privilege level commands. The disastig boots you into a on-prem console that allows you to do the things you need to administer through a, a more of a menu-driven command line style interface. Which one you choose is up to you. I recommend disastig, and so I'm going to go ahead and set that now. Um, if you are a financial group, municipality, government, probably disastig is going to be the one that you'll choose. Uh, if you're running this in a lab or you're setting up for yourself and you would like to get to the batch prompt, you can. Uh, generally for production, 
unless you think you need to do some form of troubleshooting, Disastig is probably the best way to go. For the host name, this will be the name that you give it if you've got a DNS server. In the event that you don't have, this can just be a vanity name. I'm going to leave it at the default of SSM on-prem. The next thing that we need to do is look at our IP address. Here I'm going to enter the IP. The values that you pick will come from your network team or your lab admin. So I'm going to go ahead and enter mine in. Yours will come from that checklist earlier that you created. I'm going to put my mask in. I'm going to go ahead and put my gateway in. And then lastly, a DNS. Now, I don't have a DNS here in my lab, so I'm just going to use one of the publicly available ones. Um, this one's easy for me to remember. If you're going to do IPv6, you would enable it here and then go ahead and fill in your values from your checklist. Uh, for this demo, I'm not going to do v v6. So at this stage, I'm ready to now install the software. So let's go ahead and click OK. It's going to come up and ask for a password. The default password is in the installation guide. It's Cisco Admin exclamation 2345. Uh, you're going to want to choose one that's relevant for you. I don't recommend that you leave it as the default in your production environment. Uh, I would just store it in a secure place. If you lose it or forget it, you will not be able to log into the box. There is no other access or, or any other way to log in except via the admin user with this password. So I would recommend maybe a password vault. I personally like Bitwarden. Uh, there are many out there. The one you choose will be up to you. So I'm going to leave it with Cisco Admin exclamation point 2345 for this demo, but again, would not do that in a production environment. At this stage, the software is now being called, copied from the ISO onto the virtual hard drive. You're going to get a checklist right here. If anything went wrong, it will pause right here. It uh, looks like it went well for me. So at this stage, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. It will take about 10 or 15 minutes for it to run. So while it's running, um, I'm going to pause it and come back when it's completed. Okay, guys, it's been a little under 15 minutes. During that time, the various software packages were copied over to the hard drive. The application was installed. The databases were created and seeded with data. And the system finished up setting up the necessary security profiles, the firewall rules that are needed, and just generally configuring the system. It then automatically rebooted, and we're watching that boot process. The next screen that we should see in this uh, here is the shell login. So at this point, our server is fully installed and ready for us to register it with Cisco. Thank you for watching this video, and hopefully stay safe.